rusty swing set creaked a melancholic tune as I pushed myself back and forth, the empty playground echoing my loneliness. My name is Leah, and for as long as I can remember, it's been just me. No siblings, no friends, just me and the vast echoing silence of our new home nestled in the quiet suburbs of Victoria. My parents, bless their hearts, tried everything. Playdates were a disaster. The other kids seemed wary, almost frightened of my quiet demeanor. School was no better. Recess became a personal purgatory, filled with whispered taunts and stolen glances. Tonight, though, a sliver of hope flickered amidst the loneliness. Earlier, while digging in the sandbox, my fingers brushed against something soft. It was a teddy bear buried deep beneath the crimson-tinged sand. Grime caked its once fluffy fur, but its sad button eyes held a strange charm. I knew then this was no ordinary toy. Holding the bear close, I hurried home, a hesitant smile gracing my lips for the first time in weeks. The sight of it sent shockwaves through my usually stoic parents. Dad, ever the optimist, beamed. Leah, did you make a friend at the park? My heart ached at the lie that wouldn't form. Instead, I mumbled about finding it in the sand. Mom, ever practical, frowned at its state. Let's get this little guy cleaned up, shall we? Under the warm glow of the kitchen lamp, we scrubbed the grime away, revealing a patchwork of faded brown and cream fur. He looks like he's been through a lot, Dad said, his voice tinged with sympathy. But you know what? We'll take care of him. How about we call him B-Teddy? B-Teddy for best Teddy. The name felt right, a tiny spark of warmth igniting within me. That night, B-Teddy nestled beside me under the covers, a silent companion erasing the usual hollowness that accompanied bedtime. The next few days were a blur of sunshine. B-Teddy was by my side at every turn. I confided in him, my voice no longer a lonely whisper, but a stream of shared dreams and silly jokes. More importantly, I wasn't alone. One warm afternoon, as I built a grand sandcastle in the park, Mom's voice interrupted my creation. Time to head home, sweetie. Dinner's on the table. I pouted, but reluctantly packed up my bucket and shovel. B. Teddy, however, remained perched atop the sandcastle, his button eyes gazing out at the setting sun. Don't worry, B. Teddy, I whispered, a nervous giggle escaping my lips. I'll be back tomorrow to finish our kingdom. The next morning, however, was bathed in an unsettling stillness. As I entered the house, the air itself seemed heavy with dread. My parents were huddled around the kitchen table, their faces etched with a horrifying mixture of grief and terror. On the table, beneath the harsh gaze of the morning sun, lay B. Teddy. But he wasn't the same. A single crimson stain bloomed on his chest, a stark contrast to his once vibrant colors. Beside him, a single piece of paper lay crumpled, held down by a butter knife. My world shattered as I read the scrawled words. I am killing your daughter as the teddy was mine and I loved it a lot. The words danced before my eyes, a sickening cocktail of rage and fear flooding my veins. Who would do this? Who could be so cruel? The answers never came. Despite the police investigation, the perpetrator remained a chilling mystery. The only comfort, if one could even call it that, was burying B. Teddy beneath the old oak tree in our backyard. Days turned into weeks, weeks into months. My laughter died, replaced by a hollowness that went beyond mere loneliness. B. Teddy's death had ripped away the fragile hope that had bloomed within me. Then one night, under the pale glow of a full moon, something strange happened. I woke to a soft, familiar sound, the gentle creak of the swing set outside my window. Overcome by a strange compulsion, I rose and crept towards it. Reaching the window, I peered out. There, on the swing, bathed in the spectral moonlight, sat B. Teddy. He wasn't the same. His fur appeared matted, the once bright button eyes now glowing a malevolent red. Yet there was a familiarity in that twisted grin, a haunting echo of the comfort he once offered. A primal scream caught in my throat. My heart hammered against my ribs, a frantic drum solo echoing in the dead of night. Yet my feet, propelled by some unseen force, carried me outside, the coolness of the night air a shock against my clammy skin. As I approached, the swing creaked to a stop. But Teddy turned, his red eyes boring into mine. A cold, inhuman voice rasped from his stitched-up mouth. Leah! 
It rasped, the sound like nails scraping across a chalkboard. You missed me. Terror threatened to consume me, but a flicker of something else sparked within me. Anger, a cold, righteous fury at the injustice of it all. Who are you? I demanded, my voice surprisingly steady. B. Teddy tilted his head, a mocking smile twisting his stitched mouth. Don't you recognize your old friend? I'm B. Teddy. But some call me... He paused, his voice dripping with a chilling delight. Bloody Teddy. My mind reeled. B. Teddy, the source of my fleeting joy, was now a monstrous entity fueled by vengeance. Yet a sliver of hope remained. Maybe, just maybe, a part of the bear I cherished still resided within him. Why did this happen? I pleaded, my voice thick with despair. Why did you... Why did you kill me? Bloody Teddy scoffed, a sound like wind whistling through a graveyard. Killed? No, dear Leah, you weren't the first nor the last. The woman who stole me. She took away something precious. Now I take something precious from those who have what I crave. Friends, love, happiness. My blood ran cold. He wasn't just after me, but after anyone who dared to experience the joy of connection, the very thing he'd been robbed of. A horrifying realization dawned on me. The perpetrator of the original crime, the one who wrote the note, might still be around. Who was she? I rasped, a newfound determination hardening my voice. The woman who took you? A flicker of something akin to fear crossed his red eyes. She, she goes by many names. But you, you wouldn't understand. Frustration surged through me. I wouldn't be dismissed. This entity, this twisted mockery of B. Teddy, had taken everything from me. Now it was my turn to fight back. I will understand, I declared, my voice echoing in the stillness. You need something from her, don't you? Help me find her, and maybe, just maybe, you'll leave the others alone. A tense silence descended, broken only by the cicadas chirping in the distance. Bloody Teddy seemed to consider it, his red eyes boring into mine. Finally he spoke, his voice a chilling whisper. There's... There's a way, but it will come at a cost. My heart pounded, but I knew there was no turning back. What is it? I asked, bracing myself for the answer. Bloody Teddy offered a chilling grin, his stitched mouth stretching impossibly wide. You become one with me, Leia. You become part of Bloody Teddy. The ground shifted beneath my feet, the air growing thick with an oppressive energy. Fear, raw and primal, threatened to consume me. But alongside it, a spark of defiance ignited. No, I rasped, my voice surprisingly steady. I won't become another monster. I'll fight you. I'll find another way. Bloody Teddy let out a guttural laugh, the sound echoing through the night. Foolish child, there is no other way. You either join me or... He paused, his red eyes flashing with a malevolent glee. Become another victim. I clenched my fists digging my nails into my palms. My body burned with a cold fire, a desperate will to survive warring with the creeping tendrils of fear. A thought, a memory, flickered in the recesses of my mind. The old oak tree. B. Teddy's grave. A surge of energy, a strange sense of purpose washed over me. This was it. This was my chance. The oak tree, I breathed, the words tumbling out in a rush. That's where the answer lies. If I return what you stole, you'll be free. You'll leave the others alone. A flicker of surprise flickered across Bloody Teddy's face, replaced by a tense silence. Finally, he spoke, his voice laced with suspicion. What makes you think that will work? I don't, I admitted, forcing a calmness I didn't entirely feel. But it's the only option we have. Let's end this, Bloody Teddy. Let's find peace. The silence stretched on, taut and heavy. Finally, Bloody Teddy let out a sigh, a sound like wind whistling through a graveyard. Very well, he rasped, but know this, Leah, if it doesn't work, the consequences will be dire. With a final chilling glance, Bloody Teddy vanished into the night. I stood there trembling, a lone figure bathed in the cool moonlight. The next morning, armed with a shovel and a flickering hope, I stood before the old oak tree. As I dug, memories resurfaced, burying B. Teddy, the tears that wouldn't stop, the crushing weight of grief. Finally, my shovel struck something solid. 
I unearthed the wooden box, its paint peeling, the brass hinges rusted. With a deep breath, I pried it open. Inside, nestled amongst the faded fabric scraps, lay a small, tattered teddy bear. It was older, worn, its once vibrant colors dulled with time. Yet there was a faint familiarity about it, a whisper of something long forgotten. Tears welled up in my eyes. This wasn't B. Teddy, the one I held close at night, but it was his predecessor, the one stolen by the woman all those years ago. Holding the small bear close, I closed the box and reburied it beneath the oak tree. As I did, a sense of peace, fragile yet powerful, settled over me. I had done what I could. The following days were filled with an agonizing wait. Had it worked? Was bloody Teddy truly gone? The answer came one evening, under the same full moon that witnessed our initial encounter. A soft breeze rustled through the leaves, and there, perched on the swing set, sat a small, familiar figure. It wasn't Bloody Teddy. It was B. Teddy, the one I remembered. Soft, worn, with his endearingly mismatched buttons. A single tear rolled down my cheek, a bittersweet blend of relief and sorrow. You're back, I whispered, my voice thick with emotion. Bobby Teddy tilted his head, his button eyes reflecting the moonlight. He didn't speak, but there was a warmth within them, a silent acknowledgement of our bond. As I sat on the swing set, B. Teddy nestled in my lap, a sense of completeness washed over me. I was no longer alone, and though a shadow lingered, a reminder of the darkness we'd faced, the warmth in B. Teddy's button eyes promised a brighter future, one filled not with fear, but with the quiet comfort of companionship. 